I like how people just think that Azeroth would want to just completely and flat out destroy the Titans so that they just don't exist anymore and like just get rid of the void and like just it just kind of cracks me up. It's like yeah, let's just let's just get rid of things like that's gonna. No, that's. I don't think that's really gonna. I don't really think that's gonna. Like, Azeroth is probably gonna have to deal with the Titans herself, but uh, <laughs> Azeroth isn't gonna wake up and fight Void Lords. I'll tell you that. We don't have any idea what Azeroth really wants. I feel like I disagree with that. We have a pretty good idea of what Azeroth wants. I think Azeroth probably wants to be protected and to wake up. <laughs> Two things that we're doing. So, pretty pretty straightforward. She doesn't want to be uh, taken advantage of and put asleep. So. <laughs> Kind of over that, I think. She probably woke up, did all the creation stuff, got really tired, went to sleep, and then while she was asleep, her children betrayed her. And, uh, and everything in the cosmos is her children, so everything's vying for power over Azeroth, and nothing's gonna get it. The closest thing that will ever come to it is probably the Titans, by throwing the balance of the cosmic forces out of whack. But I think in doing so, they're unknowingly going to just wake her up. <laughs> and, uh, and when they do, um... She's probably not going to be happy with them. Or she might just go, hey, you dumb bitches. Just like Melkor, you greedy fucks try to take my power and use it for your own. You don't understand that you can't sing a song that doesn't have me in it. So, good luck creating anything beyond my bounds, bitch. And then she's going to pull that sword out of her back and absolutely fucking obliterate them. That's what I hope. But what I really hope, actually, is that she just resets the cosmos. Because that's what she does. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see if Azeroth has to, like, absolutely change um, as a world, if that were to occur. I have a feeling Azeroth would not want to rob her children of all of, you know, of their home and stuff. But at the same time, if our home is a prison <laughs> built for a titan, then, you know, I don't really give a shit. Let's wake her up. So, what is the world of Azeroth? Is that her, or just a, or just random land? It's a world that was built around her, most likely. Probably to protect her while she slept, but then it was turned into a prison. So, Argus, which has now been fused with Azeroth, probably just fully recreating Azeroth, because Here's one way that I kind of see it. We know that soul splitting is a thing. We know that you can split a soul in two. We've literally seen it happen with Uther with one blue side and one gold side, which is kind of like Azerite, which is kind of like Azeroth and Argus, which is kind of like probably not a coincidence. So Argus gets stabbed into the planet in Sargeras' sword. We get Azerite, which is the power of creation and destruction. So basically Sargeras, whether he meant to or not, puts Argus and his powers of destruction into Azeroth, probably giving her those powers, um, or returning them to her. And now, when she wakes up, she will hopefully have not just the powers of creation, which would probably be disastrous, um, but she has the powers of creation and destruction, which I think is probably necessary for reformatting the cosmos. Um, so like Argus, he was energy spinning out into the cosmos. And found warmth near a sun and fell asleep in a world formed around it to protect it as it grew. And then it was uh, betrayed. It was bound by something powerful. Time answers to me, Unmaker. The one force that can bind your relentless fury. That's what Amon Thul says. So if it was bound by something powerful, I'm going to go ahead and say it wasn't the Legion. They used its power to revive their fallen souls. Oh, I wonder who might have done that. It hurts so much. Right, I get that it, it's um, the implication is that it was the Legion, but Titan souls also got destroyed. Or at least, you know, fucked up. So, it could be, could be associated with that. They found another. It was even more powerful. They wanted to claim it, too. Then they would be unstoppable. Which, again, lines with the Legion, but... Also the Titans. So I think that Argus 
Probably during the creation of all things. Probably as a result of Azeroth. Probably maybe even fucking exploding. Azeroth could be a, a a star on the border on the on the border of supernova, similar to some of the first stars that exploded in the crucible of creation at the beginning of our real life universe. Um, she might have exploded outward in a grand flash of light in all sorts of colors. It probably wasn't just light. It's probably like, you know, all the colors of the fucking of everything. And from that, forces and and things were born. And over time, these forces have interacted with one another, tried to overthrow the grand design that is, you know, her existence. Probably the existence crafted by she and her first creation, Argus. It's probably where the, the two different uh, wings of Xerath's come from. Xerath, Vita, Ordis, Lumina are probably all creation and aligned with Azeroth. I would say Tumult, um... I can't remember the other two. I can never remember what they're called. I would say that Tumult and the other two, Mortis and uh, whatever the last one is, I think um, those things align more with Azeroth. You got three. You have a you have a single supreme being that then becomes two beings, and each of those beings is responsible for half of the cycle in its grander form, and all their children are uh, meddling in all their bullshit. Argus shows Illyria its memories, and it's described that Argus's memories are of a lifetime that surpasses the existence of the universe. Umbra, that's correct. The existence of the universe. I mean, people have blatantly ignored this very clear hint for years since Legion. For years. They have just ignored that Argus's memories are older than the universe. That's pretty insane. And so, uh, when you think about now that Argus being, you know, via Azerite and that sword fused with Azeroth, giving us the full-blown Azerite for the first time. There has been Azerite before, but it was just a golden liquid, and when it was exposed to the air, it uh, hardened into like an amber-like red kind of uh, mineral. But once Argus and his energy via Sargeras' sword was reintroduced to Azeroth, that's when we got full-blown Azerite, which should tell you something about the nature of, of creation and destruction. When Sylvanas wields creation and, destru and destruction, she feels, or when she wields Azerite, she feels as though she's a goddess of creation and destruction. And she had never realized how deeply the two things were intertwined. It's a pretty big hint. Pretty big hint. So, when it comes to you know, what Azeroth is, what she's going to do, doesn't mean that Sargeras is a good guy and that everything he did was good. Um, doesn't mean that the Titans were good and that what they've done is good. I think they're all in the wrong. Like Farim said, I used to scoff at... I used to scoff at, uh... You know, what I thought the uh, Titans were doing and the Void Lords and the Eternals. Now I realize that they're all just as limited. Because they were all given a portion of Azeroth's gifts. And none of them can truly comprehend the whole thing. Do you think the Light goes further than the Naru? Do you think the Void goes further than the Void Lords? I have no idea. I kind of think... That yes, in a sense, Light goes higher than the Naru. I think that the highest form of Light in the cosmos is Azeroth. Um... And I'm hoping that the Arathi that we meet later will... I'm hoping that when Anduin gets his, like, light back, if he does, that it's, like, not holy light and that it's something from Azeroth. Because I think that her light is true and superior to all other forms of it. Um, and so... You know, I kind of hope that Like, I don't believe that. And it doesn't have to be that way. Like, Holy Light could be the purest form of of Azeroth's energy in, in terms of that aspect of it, in terms of light. I just have a very hard time reconciling the creation mythos that's given to us by the Titans that uh, leads us to believe that Light and Void existed before the cosmos was born and that... Uh, 
in that uh, Azeroth and subsequently all the other planets were born after the fact. I have a very hard time reconciling that because I don't really believe that Azeroth came after the beginning of the universe. <laughs> I think she is the beginning of the universe, so. What if Illidan got it? Well, here's the thing is that um, God gave Lucifer and Eruluvatar gave Melkor his greatest of all gifts and the gifts of all of his brothers and sisters. So, he's the greatest and most powerful of them. And, uh, Sargeras is probably not different, considering his title is the Great Sargeras. And because he apparently 1v6 the other Titans. So, if that's the case, then what we see from Sargeras is probably the purest and closest rendition of Azeroth's power that we've ever witnessed. From something that isn't directly Azeroth herself. So, um... Does that make him a good guy inherently? No. But I do like to toy with the idea that unlike Lucifer and Melkor, who sought to overthrow their father, that Sargeras seeks to save her from the other children who are trying to overthrow her. That's kind of what I want to be the case, because man, I just really want Sargeras to be a good guy. But I don't think that's going to be the case um, at this point. I don't have confidence that that's going to be the case. Um, I guess in a way, you know, lost a little faith, but it's kind of hard not to when you have people screaming at you constantly that Sargeras is a bad guy and you're an idiot for thinking otherwise. So, you know, sometimes you start to bend to that a little bit. Liz loves making the bad guys good. Well, I kind of think from my perspective, would Metzen, like thinking of it this way, is he really just retelling Melkor? Is he really just retelling Lucifer? And is, is that what I want to believe? Or do I want to believe there's some there's some originality there? I kind of want there to be some originality. I kind of want it to be, you know, Sargeras is the fallen titan and all that stuff. Looks like a demon or whatever, but it's funny that, like, Lucifer, who was an angel, is, like, basically Sargeras, and Lucifer led a, led a bunch of other angels, and Sargeras leads a bunch of demons. Which seems funny. Seems like they're almost the inverse. It would also be... I've played with the idea before of like, you know, what is a demon? What makes a demon? Um, and one could bring the argument that it'll, it is a lot of perspective um, in regards to what actually classifies a demon. Because something like the Draenei, the Eridar, are not that far from demons. In fact, the Eridar look like ordered demons. Um, and... Uh, so, I love, you know, this is like all uh, fan fiction of my own, and I don't think that this is the case, but it would be cool if, um, if mortals had some type of inherent thing, like, cast upon them, some type of curse or something that, uh, doesn't allow them to see, uh, Sargeras, uh, and demons for what they really are. There's absolutely zero proof of that at all. But it'd be, I think it'd be cool if it, in some capacity, it turned out that they, the, what we know as demons, are actually angels. I don't know. 